Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's briefing. Last week, we began celebrating Black History Month with a number of events being held virtually and physically on campus. We ended the week with SU's second annual anti-racism summit. If you missed it or would like to watch it again, a link to the recording is posted on the Office of Diversity and Inclusion website. I think it's worth a look. Not only was the keynote powerful, but you'll also find resources from Dr. David Stovall to help us along our journey to eliminate racism from American culture. I am proud to be at an institution where we can hold respectful conversations about difficult topics like critical race theory. This really is how some of the deepest learning takes place. There are many other events being held in person and on campus virtually uh, as we celebrate Black History Month. Now, as many of you know, we recently conducted a comprehensive cl campus climate study and formed an implementation committee, which took information from that study and presented 18 recommendations. Those recommendations are available online and you'll probably recognize that there's been progress made already. We've instituted mandatory diversity and inclusion training for students, faculty, and staff, and a new search is underway for two assistant director positions in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion to support uh, students and employees, as well as provide more opportunities for education and to increase multicultural programming. And just last week, we welcomed a new director of SU's Counseling Center, and we have continued to increase the in-person and online resources needed to promote mental health on our campus. Now to COVID-19, and the news is good. I want to start by saying thank you. Your ongoing commitment to doing what's necessary to keep yourselves and each other safe has allowed us to open on time and in person. The case rates among members of our SU community remain very low, and this has allowed us to stay safe and begin relaxing some of our restrictions. The university health team has updated the guidance to allow instructors and presenters to remove masks in classrooms when they remain at least six feet away from others in the room. New event capacities and guidance are also in place to reflect our lower numbers. That means we can have somewhat larger in-person events on campus. Soon, the university health team will review campus-wide mask guidance and other restrictions as it receives more data. We're taking these steps in the hopes of returning to a more normal campus experience while keeping safety as our top priority. Our high vaccination and booster rates paired with our robust testing infrastructure and in-house contact tracing allow us to spot trends and adjust to changing conditions quickly. We're committed to staying open in person, so our policies must be designed to protect everyone's health and safety but we also want to balance that with returning to a sense of normalcy. And we believe that these steps will allow us to do that. I'm now going to turn it over to my chief of staff to address some of your questions and provide a few more updates. Eli Modlin, take it away. Thank you, Dr. White. Um, first, I just want to remind uh, students and employees to monitor the timeline for when they're eligible for a booster and to get boosted when that time comes up. Um, for all students and employees who have not yet received a return test, those are required to uh, be completed by this Friday. Um, also, we want to add that missed tests are available on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, as well as Tuesdays and Thursdays in the afternoon. Students and employees have four missed tests on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and have an unlimited amount of missed tests on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We wanna to continue to remind folks uh, to call Campus Health and to stay home if you're not feeling well. Um, we also want to let you all know that additional KN95s are going to be made available from the Guerrero Student Union Info Desk on Monday. So if you've already received your first allotment of 10, starting this Monday, you can go to the Guerrero Student Union and get your next set 
um, we have more available now. Um, now to some of the questions. Um, someone asks about uh, a universal policy for, um, for absence related to COVID. So um, the Faculty Senate um, may change recommendations for an emergency absence policy last semester. Certainly students still need to work with their individual faculty if they are missing class related to COVID or any other reason. Um, and if there are questions about that, you can email either stayinformed at salisbury.edu and they will direct you, or you can email provost at salisbury.edu and the question will go directly to the uh, Division of Academic Affairs. Um, about drinking in the classroom. So um, eating and drinking is still restricted to those designated areas on campus. Um, certainly some faculty um, would allow you to have water or things like that in the classroom as this person asks. Uh, this person is asking about metrics to lift mask and vaccine mandates. Um, Throughout the course of the pandemic, the university health team has considered a number of metrics and a number of data points to make decisions, um, erring on the side of caution. Um, as the president mentioned, they're easing up on some of those mask restrictions now and will continue to monitor uh, the, the conditions and update policies accordingly. Uh, we talked about additional masks being made available at the Guerrero Student Union come Monday. Um, N95 fit testing is available. Uh, this fit testing is limited just because of the amount of time that it takes to do a fit test. But if you are interested in getting fit tested for an N95 mask, you can email Campus Health and they will set you up with an appointment. Testing is available to all students and employees regardless of vaccination or booster status. If you visit the TimeTap website, anyone, any student or employee can sign up for a COVID-19 test in the Great Hall. Um, this person is asking about the format for uh, May commencement. Uh, so grad walks will take place this May at the Wacomico County Civic Center on May 20th and 21st. Um, they'll be organized by schools and colleges. And all of this information is actually available on the commencement webpage. So for more details about um, May commencement, please visit the, uh, the website. Um, and that did it for the questions. I just want to note that in today's Stay Informed email, there will also be a link to more information about the presidential search. So be sure to look out for that. Thank you for tuning in.